Etsy, don't cry. It's okay. It's just not working out. It's, it's not you, it's me. No, actually, it kind of is you. Hi friends, Kathy Olson here of Love Inspired, love-inspired.com, and today we're going to be talking about breaking up, and specifically breaking up with Etsy. Breaking up with Etsy is hard to do, and it's one of those things that you want to make sure that you're very intentional and careful about because they have rules, and they have shop policies that you want to make sure that you are following to the T so that you don't get in trouble. But you also just want to do it the right way, right? We love Etsy. We don't want to burn them, right? They were your first love. Let's break up with them the right way. The overarching thing that I want to talk to you today about how to get those Etsy customers to your shop, to your list, to your community, to your following, so that you can connect with them in the future. Etsy is very much a one-time purchase for a lot of people. They search for a product, they find it, they buy it. They don't really necessarily think about who they got it from. Because as I spoke about in my last video, there's really not a lot of brand equity over there. And if you want to check out that video, here's a link so you can check out that other video I have. You got that big win, you got that first purchase, and now what? How do you get those people again? How do you connect with them again? Or if you want to have two shops simultaneously, either way, you've got to have access to those people. And we all know Etsy doesn't let you use their email addresses. So I want to talk about Etsy's policies, and I also want to clarify what they are and what they aren't. The biggest thing that you should know is that Etsy does not have a rule against you posting your website or your social media links on your listings or on your about page or on your shop anywhere, really. What Etsy has an issue with is called fee avoidance. And what they mean by fee avoidance is using your Etsy listing to send someone somewhere else to purchase that specific product. They're okay with you building a brand, they're okay with you having a website, they're okay with you connecting with your customers, but they aren't okay with you just having Etsy as a place to push people over to your site. So in keeping that in mind, we still need access to our customers. So I'm gonna talk about three different ways that you can start accessing your clients or customers and eventually either totally move over to your website or just have access to those people so that you can sell them other products on Etsy. So number one, start building that brand and that brand recognition. You wanna make sure that you have a great logo, a great slogan, or something that you do, your kind of mission statement that you're gonna put everywhere, something real catchy, your colors, your look, but you want to start using that on Etsy. So you wanna be posting your website link, whether it's your blog or it's your website. You can post social media links, but remember with your social media links, you're still not getting that information. So for example, if you have them go and follow you on Instagram, you still don't have their email address. All in all, your number one goal needs to be pushing them to your newsletter list. M maybe you know that you need a newsletter list and you haven't been setting it up. Even if you don't send out any newsletters just yet, think of this as your client role, your customer role. You want to create your own. Whether you're using social media platforms or your website, you want to be pushing people to sign up to your list. And then my tip number two goes right along with that, and that's actually how you can get people over to your list, is by giving them something for free. Maybe there's a downloadable PDF that goes with the order. Maybe it's instructions. Maybe it's a video that they watch on how to use your product. Any of those things that you can get them signed up on your list so that you can connect with them in the future. And the third important thing that you need to do is make sure that you're making your website really work for you and also your social media. So once they get there to your website, once they click over to your website, you really want to start connecting with them there and building brand awareness on your website. Another way to build more brand awareness is to use other people's platforms. This could mean a collaboration with another brand, or maybe you do a guest blog post, but you're sending them all over to your site to build up your SEO, to build up your authority, your click-through, backlinks, all that good stuff. You really wanna utilize your website and have people coming there for other reasons, even than just purchasing. Maybe they're coming to learn, maybe they're coming to connect, maybe they're coming to get some more information, but the more you can use your website for brand awareness, the better. So as always, I hope that was helpful. Like I said, you don't have to totally break up with Etsy. It's okay to have two. Okay, did I really just say that? <laughs> okay, to be on both. Okay, not in relationships, but it's okay. Okay, I'm just gonna stop. So if you would like to see more videos just like this, make sure you subscribe, like, make sure in the comments below you ask a question and I will connect with you. Thanks guys.